Welcome one and all to the second Friday art talk where we hold an art panel um, on every second Friday of the month, hence the name. And I'm so delighted with our uh, panelists that we have today. It's gonna be a fabulous show as usual. Uh, but before we get into that, I would just like to run through what will be going on and also thank our sponsors. So our Flex Art, Art and Design, as I've mentioned in previous periods, have stepped up and supported the artist community in a time where everybody is struggling. So thank you for being so heroic and stepping in to support a community that does need support. Um, uh, uh, Flex Art and Design, thanks so much for that. And also we'd like to give a big thanks to Alameda Municipal Power for also stepping in and supporting our artist community so that we can carry on doing what we're doing. We really thank you for your support and um, our gratitude goes a long way, especially in these difficult times. All right, then. Um, I would like to mention that the audience will be muted during the interview process, uh, during the panel, but we do have the chat going on. Feel free to put your questions or comments in the chat. We'll pick them up as we go along. The more interactive we are, the richer the discussion will become. Uh, we, uh, as I mentioned, questions can be posted and we will answer those, but we do have a question and answer session right at the end of the panel discussion. That way we can give the artists time to, to talk about their work, really go through it. And then at the end, we address any questions that may come up. All right, so right now, I would love to introduce to you my, our panelists. And first we have uh, Dylan, Dylan Robert Mertz, uh, and it, the artwork is going to be uh, Blue Path. That's the artwork we'll be talking about. And Dylan will also be painting at the art fair on the, on the 3rd of July. I'm not sure about that date. I think it's the 7th of July. But um, you can check the website for that, for updates on that. And we also have our photographer, Joseph Anderson. And the piece we'll be looking at today, amongst others, hopefully, is um, Street Portraits bounty hunters. So welcome to uh, Joseph and uh, Dylan. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on our panel. And we'll go straight into it with our first volunteer, um, Joseph, who will uh, tell us a bit about himself before we get into the work. So Joseph, welcome to the panel. And um, please tell us a bit about yourself and where you're from. Yep. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Joseph. Um, I currently live in Sacramento. Uh, I've been out here for a good like seven, eight years. Uh, what really got me into photography was like skateboarding um, in my hometown initially, uh, Patterson near Modesto. Um, then I ended up coming to Sacramento, going to school for photography and I am where I am now. Here, one more time, I can't hear you. I was muted for a second. Uh, okay. Yeah, thanks so much for that. So, so you are in Sacramento now, but you're yes. from Patterson near Modesto, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Okay, awesome. So we'll get back to you and uh, talk about the art piece once we hear from Dylan. Um, and yeah, Dylan, take it away. Um, tell us a bit about yourself and where you're from. Um, hello, thank you all for joining. Um, my name is Dylan Robert Mertz. I was born in Alameda, California mm -hmm. in the Alameda Hospital in 94. About a couple of years later, they shut down the maternity ward there. So I'm one of the last people born in Alameda outside of uh, private births, which is kind of weird to say. I don't like, I don't know what's up with that. Um, I reside in Oakland, California, lived here for about the past 12 years. Um, I'm a, about my artwork, I'm an abstract live painter, you can call it. I go out to different events, whether it's the art and wine fairs, music festivals, nightclubs, raves, out Lake Merritt, wherever, and I'll paint my abstract painting, um, not necessarily representing what I'm looking at uh, in an identical one-to-one uh, -one ratio, but in some sort of abstract manner. Um, I do a 
couple different styles of art outside of abstraction. I do pop art, um, I guess, kind of street art style, mostly pop. And um, I got my work folk, uh, featured in the Mirrors Gallery a couple months ago. And as Victor uh, mentioned, I'll be in the Alameda Art Fair coming up next month. And you can check out the all the information there on artpush.org and Jessica's personal handles. And um, yeah, I do uh, art curation for local crews and raves and uh, festivals. And mute it again, Victor. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks so much for that, Dylan. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to hearing more about your work. Um, so right now we're going to jump back to um, to Joseph. And could you so so the piece we will be looking at? Could you tell us a, a bit more about the bounty hunters? Okay. Um, that photo specifically. Um, usually when I go out and shoot photos, it's, um, I'm looking for people that I'm interested in, um, people that appeal to me. Um, sometimes people just come to me, you know, and we'll have a natural conversation, um, outside of the fact that, uh, I want to shoot their portrait or um yeah sometimes it just it, it just comes naturally and with that photo specifically um we have these things in sacramento called concert in the park and right across the street from concert in the park uh it's a skate shop we hang out at and um he just so, so happened to be there i found him interesting and uh Yeah, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't even realize uh, how interesting he was before I started to talk to him, you know. Um, I didn't know I wanted to shoot his portrait until I started to talk to him. So a lot of the times, uh, the people that I come in contact with is through conversation, uh, naturally. Um, not even going up to these people uh, asking can I shoot their photo before getting to know them and talking to them. Um, and that's just kind of what happened with this one. Beautiful, Joseph. N now, I, I don't want us to, to miss the, the conversation on conversation because mm -hmm. it looks like it's a, lo it's a lost art now, the, the art of talking to people. So could you could you just expand a bit more? How do you approach people? Do you find it easy to approach people, or how how does that um, connection happen? Um, it definitely matters what mindset I'm in. Um, sometimes I'll go in and shoot photos and um, want to shoot portraits like these, but may not have the confidence to do so, depending on how I'm feeling personally. Um, but other days I feel more confident than others, you know, and I'm able to approach people and talk to them in a certain way to make them feel comfortable in order for me to shoot portraits um, like this uh, photo that you're showing at the moment. Um, but yeah, it definitely depends on how I'm feeling. Um, Cause sometimes I do feel intimidated to walk up to people, but I've, uh, other times, I don't, you know, I, I feel very confident. Mm. Beautifully put. Um, yeah, the, the reason I ask is because I've, all, I've also personally wondered how photographers do it, because I, you know, I, I struggle to approach people and ask them to take their photos. So thanks for sharing that. And this is indeed a very powerful image. Um, he does look, he is a powerful figure. So, so to speak. Um, could you say more about the pose that we see here? Because it's very dramatic, it's very uh, commanding. Right, right. Um, so usually when I shoot these type of photos, uh, I don't try to pose people. 95% uh, of the times I don't try to pose people. I want people to be as natural as they want. I want them to express themselves how they want to. 
And without me even having to explain this uh, to my subject, uh, he was he expressed himself how he wanted to express himself. And I, I was able to capture that. And um, when I go out and shoot street photography or street portraits, um, I definitely look for certain things um, pertaining to what I'm into as far as like maybe like tattoos or um, certain dressing styles, um, certain things like that. But um, sometimes these things just end up falling into my hands without me searching for it, you know? I, like I said, uh, when I shot this photo, I was just kind of hanging out with friends and um, this man just ended up being where we were, where we were hanging out and we just ended up having a conversation and I was able to capture this photo. Beautiful. Thanks so much for, for, for that uh, elaborate ex explanation. And um, for those watching, if you have any questions for our panelists, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will attend to those as we go through. Thanks so much, Joseph. Joseph. Much appreciated. I, have a, I, do, I do have a question, Joseph, uh, pertaining to the image we were just looking at. Could you okay. tell us about, if you're comfortable, about the conversation you had with this gentleman? and um, um, how it kind of maybe translate into the photo, if it does at all? Okay, um, so I don't necessarily remember the, um, the conversation for a uh, word to word or whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, but a lot, of, a lot of the times, like people uh, ask me like what I'm shooting and why I'm shooting it, you know, and um, I think what this one was just, I kind of, I seen his tattoos um, and I'm very interested in tattoos and the culture of tattoos or uh, even the culture of like gangs. Um, he's throwing up gang signs, he has tattoos, he's uh, showing where he's from and what he's representing. Uh, and I just found that very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seems like this guy definitely was a, a Los Angeles neighborhood blood of some sort. For sure. And it's interesting because he has the 916 on his chest. So, um, and he also has bounty hunters on his stomach, which is an LA gang. And yeah. it kind of showed whether he migrated from LA to here or vice versa, you know, because he has both cities on his body, you know. And is that something that you, have background in when you were growing up in Modesto? Um, not necessarily or... that, but just um, I'm interested in tattoos and I'm interested in, uh, I guess, not necessarily gangs, um, but it is interesting. Some of my photog some of my favorite photographers document um, kind of like gang activity and things like that. Yeah, shows a real side of things. For sure, for sure. It, it's a, it's a, um, it's a perspective on things that not everybody gets to see, you know. And that's what I want to incorporate into my photography. Um, being a street photographer, um, there's a lot of things that people don't really. Um, come in contact with on a daily basis that I photograph. Beautiful. Thank you for that cross-pollination, which um, gives us a beautiful, uh, a, be a natural segue into Dylan's work now. And uh, Joseph, if you do have questions also, feel free to chime in and um, weave it beautifully like uh, Dylan did. All right, Definitely. so, so Dylan, moving on to you, Blue Path, can you walk us through it? It will be, um, I'm oh, that's actually the actual painting. Thing. All right, okay. But we can, we can, we, yeah, Jessica has it right there. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, um, so this was a series of work or uh, one of a painting of um, a series of work I was doing of monochromatic uh, study 
of uh, Roy G. Biv, our color wheel, as most people learn it. And so this was the first one I did in the series. I kind of went out of order because blue is my favorite color. But I, um, this was the one that kind of started the, the, set, the, the set of the paintings and kind of set the tone of the quality of work I wanted to um, express in my painting and the techniques involved in this series of work. Um, understanding just um, different tones and hues and how to build sh shadows and lights and transparencies, only using a single tone of color. I only used um, cobalt blue and titanium white in this painting. Um, everything is just blends of those two different tones. And um, honestly, I, I like to have the uh, viewer interpret the overall image um, to their own. Um, some people see dancers in, in the work. A, a, lot of the a lot of the events I go to, uh, music festivals, nightclubs, raves, there's many beautiful dancers, moments of intimacy, um, vibrational exchange, whether it's through literally the music shape, shaking the canvas I'm painting on or the music shaking my mind and everything else in between um, gets really translated onto these abstractions. Um, I, I try to keep them in the field of abstract expressionism as the American abstraction forefathers kind of uh, dictated, but then also keeping it minimalist, which was kind of the counter movement to that movement itself of abstraction. So I'm trying to marry the two fields and schools of art into one, almost a new school abstraction. Um, this is sometimes considered um, graffiti futurism for some reason, or just modern contemporary. Um, that's that. <laughs> there's a lot to, there's a lot going on in the painting. Um, and at the time, it was about a year after my mother passed away. So I was pretty much isolating myself. And Jessica, if you see there, there's the, the, the whole series um, red through uh, purple. Um, so this, uh, we can talk about each individual one if you want. And Victor, if you have any questions about the work, um, just, just feel free. Um, but as, as I was saying, uh, so the red one I painted, uh, pretty much all of them are figure studies to a lesser degree of uh, this orange one was painted out of fire jam that happens at Lake Merritt every Friday. This yellow one was painted, um, a model was studying for me as was this green one. Uh, many of them, many of the times I go to uh, the Rose Garden right near my house, the Morecambe Rose Garden, get inspiration from florals. Um, this one was painted live at the Midway in San Francisco. Um, so mostly music influenced this one and overall movement of silk flow. And um, this one was kind of like an, a culmination of all of them. So. Mm -hmm. No, go on. I, I cut you off there. I, I, really, I was just going to go ramble off after that. Victory. <laughs> <laughs> cut you at the right time. All right. Yeah. So um, could we just go back to the blue one, uh, Jessica? Thank you, because I stayed at this one for, for much longer. Now, um, Dylan, this is really, really amazing work. It, it is totally amazing. And if you hadn't jogged my mind into the fact that it's actually one color and the tones of it, I, I, I was seeing so much color in it. So it, it almost seems like the absence of color brings in the color. So. I view it as really colorful and it's Im immaculately done. Could you talk more about your draw to music? What draws you to music to, to go and want to paint there? Um, so when I was maybe 16 years old, I went to a rave. And for those who don't know what a rave is, it's usually held in a warehouse or some sort of uh, unpermitted venue. And, um, sound systems come in and DJs and sound technicians come in and create an atmosphere for people to express themselves in any way they want, whether it's dance or music or et cetera. I went to one of these raves and I was befuddled because I saw about three or four different painters 
painting in a sea of people dancing with sweat dripping on the canvas. And I was like, why are you here? Like what? And they were there to share of their work in a place that not many people were exposed to painting. And that um, inspired me uh, to the point where I, I reached out to the person who was throwing that show I went to and asked him how I could be involved. And he said he was tired of the, the person promoting the show said he was tired of um, dealing with local artist prima donnas. <laughs> and so he made me the art curator. And so then I started curating what I would then call live painters and then um, was brave enough to pick up a, a brush on my own and uh, paint at an event myself. And I've been doing that for about eight years now. Wow, that's really that's really amazing. So we do have a question in the chat. Um, Trish uh, it says you blend the organic and the structure very well. Can you speak to that? Yeah, and Trisha, if I'm wrong, maybe you could correct me. By structure, you mean the more of like the transparent cubes? Uh, okay. Yeah, they, they can't answer right away. No, I, I saw I saw Trish thumbs up. Um, oh, okay. Cool. If you want to go back to the painting, Jess, or uh, Wes, um, I can maybe talk to you about that really quick. So the paintings, if you look at the center of the painting, uh, there's a big palette knife motion going on. In fact, two big palette knife motions. Those are most often than not the start of the painting. Uh, they kind of really like, it's like jumping on a high wire. I'm, it's really whatever happens with those blends, it kind of really tells me what's happening. Otherwise I just paint over it. Um, so once I get those two big palette knife motions, then you got all the wispy organic cloud structure. Uh, perhaps extending arms or a moment of expo explosion or something like that, whatever you want to be. That is just me taking titanium white and blending it with the pigment I put down, creating the multitude of hues, allowing the paint to blend on the canvas and then taking a secondary dry brush and then um, brushing that out till it blends into the background. And then once I have a, a form, you could call it, it's not a figure, but it's a form. Uh, I will add the cubism and um, kind of uh, compose the image a little bit more with the cubes. And then I will go back into the abstraction. It's, a, it's similar to what abstractionists would call push and pull. I'm, I'm pushing and pulling the image. Beautiful. Thank, thanks so much for that um, explanation, uh, Dylan. Let's see. Okay, so we don't have any more um, comments in the chat, which is fine. Um, those watching, please, <clears throat> please do feel free to put your questions in the chat and we will attend to them as we go. Um, David Sylvester writes, Dylan, you're crazy. Love your process work. All right. Okay, now um, thank you both for sharing your work. And um, my takeaway from that was Joseph goes into spaces and reveals those details and the interesting aspects of, uh, of, of humanity, brings out the human being behind the, the mask that we see, the character comes out. And um, it's really beautiful to see those points of interest then open up our eyes to say, oh yeah, I thought 916 was just a number, right? I'm, I'm not, somebody not from America might not pick that up as a code, as a code right? But um, it's interesting that you took us in that direction. It, 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 came from, it went from not just being an image, but being a story about a human being. So we really appreciate that. And I'm um, just looking through the other pieces. So you can actually see um, Dylan's work at on Instagram and the handle is prof.jelly, right? So yep. Once again, Instagram handle is prof.jelly. You can find um, Dylan's work there. No, sorry, Joseph, Joseph's work. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> prof.jelly is me. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah, for those who don't know, I just had COVID last week, so my brain is a bit fried. <laughs> okay, talking about COVID, talking about the pandemic, um, we go into our third question then, um, which is 
the pandemic itself, how did it impact you and your work or both? We'll start with Joseph. Okay. Um, for me, it was just, it was pretty fun just to see like um, the different environment of certain areas, especially being in Sacramento. A lot of the times it's very populated um, in downtown areas or areas or kind of wherever you go. Um, but during COVID, it was very isolated, you know, so it was a whole different energy. And it was pretty fun just to explore different places and to kind of get a different feel of these certain areas that I've already been to. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so my follow up question to that would be, we just saw an image with a human being in it. Suddenly, mm -hmm. those human beings aren't there anymore. But what I'm sensing here is, instead of looking at the loss, you saw what was there and appreciated the new, the new um, environment and take. Could you speak more on that? Um, how you're able to, to take what you to, to take what you're given, so to speak. Right. Um, how you're saying with like a, a different environment. Um, although there weren't, there wasn't necessarily um, an environment that people were used to uh, with there being a high population um, during COVID, me going out and kind of exploring and shooting photos like, there is more of a discrete population and there is more of a just different energy. People are doing different things, you know? Um, people weren't being as watched um, as they would be if everything was going normal, you know? Um, there's a lot of underground scenes of things and um, I feel very fortunate to be able to connect with certain people that have access to these underground scenes uh, that people don't necessarily see every day. Um, so yeah, that, that was my COVID experience. I was able to uh, get into places and see things that you weren't necessarily able to see when everything was normal. Wow, beautiful. Uh, I keep going deeper and deeper into, into what I'm thinking about now, but I don't want to hog the conversation. I will read from the chat once, uh, once again. Uh, Trish comments, Joseph, great things, um, seeing the humanity of the people, not hiding. So, so, sorry, it jumped. Seeing the humanity of the people, not hiding from COVID. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Um, Sarah asks, did COVID limit your ability to find subjects in any way? Um, not necessarily, but it just changed my outlook on things, on what I can document through uh, my camera. Um, I was just, it just, it, it made me want to adapt and to continue to make content um, with having to adapt. Wow, beautifully put. Um, so unmute when you have a chance, Jason Wes. Oh, oh, Dylan's muted. While Dylan's uh, muted, I'll just say, Joseph, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, thank you. And your, your lens to adapt. What I loved about what you said was, yeah, things had changed, but then you appreciated the new reality that was there. I, for instance, was freaked out by the empty streets. Um, so I was more focused on what was missing rather than seeing the new reality. So thanks for, for highlighting that and proving that you can have a positive come out of a negative. Really, really appreciate that, Joseph. Much Thank appreciate you. And uh, for those watching now and after this recording is posted, please do reach out to these artists and um, have a conversation, talk about their work, support them um, by, by purchasing their work, if you will, because this is just profound work. 
Joseph has shown us that if you open your eyes and, and look, you will see something. And that something doesn't need to be judged by whether it's a pandemic or not. There is always something. And how you do that is you adapt. Thanks so much for that, Joseph. Much thank appreciated. You, thank you. All right. All right, Dylan, we're going to move on um, to you. The, the pandemic, the quarantine, all that. How did that impact your work? Or have we spoke? Yeah, we spoke about your work. Okay. Can I, um, can I just go run and grab my battery charger? Oh, please do. Please do. While, while you do, I will look at the comments. <clears throat> So Sarah says, um, I love the empty uh, buildings, that's Trish. And then Sarah comments saying, that's very, that's very well put, Victor. I can't really remember what I said, but I'll jump back to it. What's Joseph's Instagram? So Joseph's Instagram is, could we, could we pull it, put it in the chat? Pam is asking that. Oh, yeah, of course. It's uh, visuals by Joseph underscore. All right. Ooh, some powerful work there. Thank Dylan. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Dylan does have an IG also and is prof dot jelly. Correct. 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 All right. So, sorry about that, everyone. Um, no, didn't no. I realize worries. my computer was dying. <laughs> oh, good. So, okay. Um, so basically the pandemic, um, Dylan, how did that impact you and your work? So as I kind of spoke about in my first little uh, conversation with you, Victor, I mostly paint out at events. <laughs> so painting not at events was very bizarre to me. I hardly paint in isolation um, as we look at some of my more newer work. Um, I usually draw inspiration from going out much, much like Joseph. Um, so going out to streets and seeing it empty for about two months was really strange and feeling like I was in a sci-fi horror film was very bizarre. I very much uh, resonate with how you, you had the perspective, Victor, is like, where is everyone? But then it's kind of Joseph um, touched upon, there are a lot of underground communities as um, you can you can find if you just look around. I mean, Alameda has a little bit of that with the Red Door uh, Art Collective. You have several things going on in Oakland. San Francisco is a boundless treasure. But the first real experience I had painting again during the pandemic was thanks to Wes and Jess and, uh, Wes and, Jess with, and Art Push with doing um, local murals at Fruitvale, BART, and in several different districts of um, Alameda. Uh, some on Park Avenue and then some over on Webster, I believe. And um, that was really nice to kind of give back to the community in that way. But it still felt weird because I wasn't seeing that many people. Mm. And then I feel like maybe like six months into the pandemic, maybe about eight months, it was getting to summertime. And it was the craziest 4th of July I have ever seen in around Lake Merritt. There was maybe like 3,000 people shooting off fireworks. And I just went home and painted. I didn't go out and paint at the fireworks, but I went home and painted what I saw inspired by the people coming back together and rejoicing. So I really did feel solemn. And, and, and to pause on this one really quick as a segue, I am doing an auction on this painting right here on my Instagram account, on my story, you're more than welcome to put a bit on that. Uh, sorry about the plug there, I just saw the painting. Um, but yeah, it was really odd to not be around people. And then as soon as people started getting back together, it was inspiring to me. Awesome. Wow, thanks so much for that, um, Joseph. Oh, somebody, uh, Outpush commented Magritte. <laughs> it looks like Magritte had the apple come too close to his face. Exactly. Right. That's it's it's a re, <laughs> it's it's a pop art version of it. I love it. I love it. All right. So that brings me to the end of our questions. But we do have to, um, a whole ten minutes for us to to um, converse and talk about it. But what, before we get into that, I just want to say thank you for showing us that there are layers to it. You know, life is is more than just what you see on the surface. 
And um, we hearing both of you speak, it just occurred to me, just dawned on me that you deal with underground communities, the unseen part of life, you know? So thanks for opening up our eyes to that. And for those watching, I do encourage you, I really do encourage you to check out these artists' work. And if possible, get into dialogue with them because we didn't have time to really dig into what it means to hold a camera and be around people and address those questions or what it means to be painting amongst people. How does that feel? How do you get into that? How do you break through to, to be doing that? But mostly how do you do what you love to do even though those around you don't quite understand it. So if you want more answers to those questions, the artist profiles are in the chat and um, do interact with them. At this point, I'll open it up for the artists if they have any other comments to add, if they have anything else to say um, before we open the, up the chat. Ask me, ask us anything, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I, got it. Just... I like right. your monochrome work, uh, Dylan. I appreciate that, Joseph. I love how you shoot in black and white. Do you shoot DSLR or do you shoot like old school? Uh, DSLR, uh, mirrorless, um, a little bit of both, but I'm definitely on the digital side for sure. Makes it more accessible. Definitely, definitely. Uh, more convenient, I'd say that. I see a question from artpush.org. Um, what inspired the jellies? Um, Jess, if you want to put up a jelly, that'd be... Nice. But um, so jellies are kind of more of my pop art version. So we saw uh, the Temptation of Man earlier, um, the remix of that. So kind of in the middle there, I got all these different characters. Um, I originally just wanted to get away from painting abstract art. And I really wanted to kind of do it more in a pop art sense of style. Because when I was a kid, I went and saw Andy Warhol. It was one of the first museum showings I saw at the MoMA, Andy Warhol and Basquiat. And um, the bold line work, the graffiti elements of Basquiat's work, the pop art kind of ripoff of Andy Warhol, it kind of was like, wow, it's so simple, but it has it this bam right there in your face pop. So I... I started wanting to do that. And honestly, the, the jellies themselves, um, kind of, if you're looking at the, the camera there, the three middle portrait type things, the, the wiggly nature all started from just studying seaweed. Um, the character design itself, it was all just seaweed and understanding how I can use, again, one tone or a couple different tones to make a form that was 3D and then use, um, hard black lines and highlights to make a, a pop art kind of figure or character, in this case, a camera that we're looking at right now. And um, it was just my outlet of kind of presenting something more real, like concrete, like what you're seeing is what you're seeing. Um, but also if we, uh, Jess, if you go over one more to the right, so we look at a figure of a jelly, um, I don't paint faces. And all my characters are non-gendered. You can assign a gender to them if you want, if you want to be like that. But really the goal is to have the audience look at it and just be like, they're they just what they are. That's a, a, a being with a flower or a, a person playing with a hula hoop or something like that. And especially in the Bay Area, we deal with so many non-binary, beautiful people of color and culture and, I, and it's, ex it's exchanged somehow. And I wanted to create a character or an image that didn't have a mouth, but was just interacting with hands and also ripping off famous paintings and doing it in my own style. So that, wow. that's the jellies. <laughs> Beautiful. That, thanks so much for that. Um, I, I like how more uh, how these discussions become more and more profound the more we get into it. For example, just the empowering of the human nature by taking away the whole aspect of gender. Let's just get rid of it. You're human, I'm human, we're good. I really love that approach to it, which um, makes me segue back to, to Joseph's work. Um, so, so Joseph, when it comes to 
What's a human being to you? Man, um, what a human being is to me. Um, so previously, I would um, feel like I'd be pretty judgmental, I guess. Um, as maybe everybody is, I guess. Everybody has their ideas on other human beings and how certain human beings act and things like that. Um, but as I kind of filtered through my thoughts, um, I don't know, we're all human, you know? We, we all have our faults. We all uh, are capable of doing good. Um, but as far as when I go and shoot, uh, I feel like everybody's a human being. I, I feel like everybody's interesting in their own way. And um, I look for people that I find interesting to shoot. And also, like I said, um, sometimes people that I find interesting come to me before I have to go to them. And I think that's amazing because uh i like to build my work off of people i find interesting but like when those people come to me and we can have a good conversation or whatever it just cuts my my work in half you know uh i don't have to go searching you know that it kind of just um uh, finds me and yeah beautiful Thank you. As you were speaking, I was just looking through your work and yeah, you have got a, an array of different people there. Mm -hmm. Just the, the common thread being there, interesting. You know, thank so you. I think, yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. And I don't thing, want to overplug, but um, please do reach out to the artists. They are available on, on social media or if you can't find their social media handles, if you go to fridayartwalk.com, you will find the, this discussion and all the other information below it. At this point, I'd just like to thank um, two friend, two very good friends of mine who have become family, Jess and Wes, and their idea to make this happen. And also for bringing together Art Push, the nonprofit that's making this possible. And for everybody at Art Push, thank you so much for making Alameda such a vibrant, um, art community, the Bay Area is really, really vibrant because of people like you. And of course, the artists who make it all happen. At this point, I want to thank Joseph and Dylan. Thank you so much for your inspiration. Like um, uh, D David in the chat says, Dylan, our style is very different, but your jellies and monsters go hand, go, and my monsters go hand in hand. You're an inspiration. And that's what it's about. And to, to you, the artists, once again, thanks so much. Please keep doing what you're doing. And um, we appreciate you more than you can imagine. At the, yeah, at this point, I would like to invite people once again, if you have any questions, this will be the time to do so. We have a whole 15 minutes for, for discussion here. So feel free to ask questions if you have any. We do have Yelena ask, uh, saying, thank you very, very much for the beautiful work and presentation and to Art Push and Victor. Thank you. Thank you, Yelena, for the support, ongoing support. We appreciate that. All right, it's, it's up to you guys. F fill in the gaps. <laughs> uh, beautiful discussion. I really, uh, really enjoyed it. So where to from now? Where to from now? Well, I... I um... One thing I was picking up on when I didn't have quite a, a time to sneak in there is um, I, in the, when you were just talking there, Joseph, you kind of said you, you started off judgmental mm -hmm. and then you opened up more with your work, right? Right, but right. You, or something along those lines. I think that's so human. I think that's a human innate thing that we we see it in our grandparents and everything like that is this like and even ourselves every human really is like we want to be set in our ways we want to think that we can look at someone and be like oh we know who that person is and mm -hmm. like is we go it's kind of like an oxymoron in your photography because it's almost like you're presenting images that we want to be judgmental towards sure. but then 
we have to kind of dive in a little bit deeper and realize, well, we're just humans. We don't know what corner they took and went down this road. How did right. I wind up here? And a lot of people want to say that they know exactly how they got to where they got into and how, you know, their perspective is the right perspective and how their cultural identity is the supreme cultural identity and et cetera. And I see that in almost every demographic. And it, it, it takes you like just a second to sit there and be like, oh, wait, like what we're just all we're talking about is we're all just humans. We're all sharing perspectives. It, it we're all just on this planet Earth. And, you know, it's an accident. <laughs> yeah. And you definitely cannot have said it better. Um, it, it's interesting, too, because like, what I shoot, I do get um, like a backlash on certain things that I shoot, you know, um, as far as like, oh, I'm exposing somebody or whatever the, may, whatever the case may be from my audience perspective. Um, but, you know, it, I love to just show humanity and I think it's beautiful regardless of the perception on, um, my subject from my audience or however they feel about my photos in general uh, when I shoot these certain subjects, you know? And um, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Joseph. I, I just want to acknowledge your consistency. You did mention adapt, you know, being adaptable in the beginning. And also, and now you 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 talk about how you have, were introspective about how you perceive life, and you know that adaptability follows through. That's really beautiful to see. Thank you for that. Thank and there is a question for you. There is a question for you, Joseph, from Yelena. And um, Yelena asks, I would like to ask Joseph about um, homeless homeless issues and subjects. <laughs> It is such a tragedy. And did you have a chance to interact with people who are who are living on the street? Um, definitely all the time. And um, a lot of people have different reasons for um, how they're living or decide to live. Um, there's certain people that choose to live on the street. Um, there's people that had no choice but to live on the street. Um, but what's, what's interesting to me, uh, all, all of these people uh, that I came in contact with, they definitely have high spirits and um, they're capable of knowing their worth and knowing who they are and knowing the reasoning for doing what they're doing, so, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. I have to, okay. I wanted to say something really quick, um, just in, in regards to that. I don't know about the rest of you, but I feel like for some reason that when you're an artist or maybe even a musician, that you seem to um, have more contact and more intimate relationships with people that are in those kinds of situations. I feel like since, you know, I was really young, uh, like 19, 20, um, that being an artist and like being around other artists and being in those kinds of places, it seemed like the homeless and the and people maybe with mental illness and people with drug addiction were often frequenting with the artists, you know, mm. in, at a lot of these places too. Right. I don't know if that's an experience everybody has had, but it, it, it seemed to be a reoccurring theme in, in my life. I think Definitely. you can you can attribute that to multiple things there, Jess. I think it, music, culture, and art have always gone hand in hand, and that always appeals to a certain um, audience group. Uh, I mean, you can look at anywhere from the Grateful Dead era up until modern day, and you've always had like a group of musicians or painters or creatives uh, tapping into what they are seeing and uh, giving people a thing to listen to, uh, a, a talking piece about what's going on, because they want to 
not just um, real artists want to tell you what's really going on. They don't want to sell you some commercial pop. They, they want to be like, this is what's happening and you're not seeing it because the newspaper is not showing you. So I'm telling you my perspective. Well, that I feel like I, artists. Well, that yeah. and, I, and I think the environment that artists tend to create is very uh, welcoming and not judgmental. And it makes me think back to when I met Wesley and he had this, um, this coffee shop that like was an art gallery uh, music venue like 25 years ago and um and the the people that would intermingle there were just from all walks of life you know was um it was not one set of people it was just all different people so maybe um that's what makes artists so dangerous they can they can jump around into all the stratospheres but <laughs> joseph i i, okay. I, I have to say I'm Is sorry. It? Wait, wait, I'm sorry, Victor, but I, I just have to, Joseph, I have to tell you. Uh huh. I, the, the thing that grips me so much about your photos, okay, is that you are able to, in that image of the, your portraits, right? You can, uh -huh. you, you the, the humanity, like media will portray these people in some certain way, right? Like that's a gang member, right. gang tattoos or whatever. Right. But like that photo, like, like I can see, very clearly you know just another human being that i could sit there and talk to which they are obviously but you know they're right. into these you know so i, I that stereotype is person. so powerful to me his work is very powerful so. yeah i see i see that dude with the tattoo and i don't know if it's because i'm a mother but i immediately think he was somebody's son you know he was somebody's child and right. and i can see like the pain and the struggle like in his eyes um the and it's he, he's got such an honesty you know in his eyes yeah and um like i said it's it's just interesting like sometimes i don't have to look for these certain things but i'm into these things and they gravitate towards me so it's I, i'm a true believer in like everything's a reflection of whatever situation you're in you know like you're talking to maybe somebody off of the street uh they're convert they're uh they're gonna verbalize um reflecting off of what i'm verbalizing in or like i go to a certain place uh i'm gonna respect this certain area you know uh, everything's a reflection i feel and uh i think it's just amazing how what i what what i look for comes to me without me even trying to force it you know i love that joseph thank you so much this is beautiful this is really beautiful usually i cut people off but you guys stole the show really really amazing i want to comment on two things before i go into our final announcements and um just the comment about artists gravitating towards human beings irregardless of their condition i would just like to point to sad guru who spoke about spirituality and he speaks about spirituality as seeing things as they are. So stripping it away of all this social conditioning, all these um, ideas we put on people because you're on the street, therefore, blah, blah, blah. So artists, um, to sum it up, I'll say, there's a saying that goes, there's no revolution that was not started without art. At the beginning of every revolution, there is art. So artists are indeed the truth sayers, and therefore people gravitate towards the truth. Thank you both. Oh, this, we are on fire now. Unfortunately, we've got six minutes to go and we have announcements. I want to mention that the Alameda Summer Art Fair and Maker, uh, Maker Market is Sunday, the 3rd of Ju July. I hope you will be able to make it because Dylan will certainly be there and hopefully Joseph can join us too. too. Um, you can meet the artists there and have deep conversations like this or just meet other human beings and um, just have fun with that. Thank you for putting up the poster. Um, I thought that was me in the picture. And we, we have, so I do have to say, is, uh, we'll be featuring artist Zoe Boston, uh, Katie Stephan, uh, headliners are the Helltones, so there'll be live music there. Visit alamedaartfair.com for details. Once again, that's alamedaartfair.com. 
Um, vendor registration closes soon. You can also register at alameda.artfay.com. So please head over there as soon as possible because I have a feeling it's going to fill up pretty, pretty quick. And catch this show and past shows at fridayartwalk.com. Once again, that, that website is fridayartwalk.com. Um, open to everyone to make any related announcements. This is the moment. If you have anything going on, if you'd like to share, plug yourself in, this is the moment. Don't be, don't, don't be ashamed about it. This is how, what we do. Artists, do you have something going on? Uh, Pam, uh, uh, let's let's uh, pass up Pam raise her hand there. So let's let's get okay. to Pam there, and then I'll, I'll, we'll do some announcements. Thank you for that, Pam. Please go ahead. Uh, when you here. Ah, uh, thanks, Dylan. I want to announce that um, I interviewed Victor for my podcast, Art Heals All Wounds, and that's coming out on Wednesday. So if you feel like listening to Victor share more of his wisdom. I'd love for you to take a listen. So that's Art Heals All Wounds this Wednesday. That's it. Thank you. What 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 platforms can we hear that on? Everywhere. Cool. Everything, Lovely. whatever that's, you that's listen to. Yes. Good. Shotgun yeah. spread. That's how you do it, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it really Beautiful. is. It really is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Pam. And I must mention, Pam was what was our wonderful our first guests on this uh, panel series. So it's amazing to see that the community is building and growing and talking about community. I want to jump back again to thank you, Art Push, for putting this together. We, we couldn't have done it without your spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you to the artists who made this happen because you were called out of the blue to say, hey, come on this panel and you agreed to do it. But not only to do it, but to do it wholeheartedly. And for that, we can't thank you enough. We just want to let you know we truly, truly appreciate you for who you are and what you do. And also to Flax Art and Design, your generosity goes such a long way. It goes beyond the monetary value of what you gave because there was heart and soul in it. And we really appreciate that. Alameda Municipal Power, you truly are powerful. No pun intended. Thank you. With that being said, we come to the end of the um, uh, Friday Art Talk for, for June. I do understand that in July, we don't have the Art Talk. We're gonna take a small summer break and then we'll see you in August. So thank you so much for that. But you can catch uh, this episode and past episode on fridayartwalk.com. This is Victor signing off. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Victor. Great, awesome, Whew. I nailed it. Good job, and, and, and for everyone still around. Um, well, thank you guys. Auction. <laughs> no oh yeah, by the way, um, so Dylan's got the auction going on on, on Instagram. Post awesome. Yeah, yeah post that was really cool. Everybody's gonna unmute, so it's gonna be complete chaos. Yeah. Good. <laughs> well, thanks so much, everyone. That was thank amazing. You, thank you, Victor. You rock it as always. Yeah, great. And fluid. Dylan and Joseph, <laughs> you guys, amazing. Yeah. I love yeah. your work, Dylan. You know, I you're one of you're the only artists I have the pin on my on my hoodie. So you guys, you know, I got the jelly. You guys pin on paired that. really well. Yeah. Like yeah. wine yeah. and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which one was wine and yeah. which one of yours cheese. <laughs> you went together well. But you went together who, really great. Who, who knew that monochromatic uh, portraiture and uh, monochromatic uh, abstractionism went so well together in storytelling? It did. It did. For sure. Uh, well, uh, full said... disclaimer. Full disclaimer. I don't know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now he doesn't know us. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, uh, Jess uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and Victor, I just want to say, uh, Wes and Jess and Victor and Sarah, thank you so much for the last two years. You're extremely resilient. I, I was, I, I, I had my doubts that a lot that everybody would survive this. You know, like not physically, but you know, as organization. And you're just doing a terrific job, and you kept our spirits up and did the catalog you just I just I, I'm so amazed by it now back to the fair I hope to make it I just want to express my 
personal, you know, a great appreciation for everything you do and have done. And it meant a lot to me personally that, you know, you were around for that for the last two very hard years. And those uh, monthly talks made a big difference.